going to talk to you about success is not coming to you. You got to go to it. Right, right, right. Success not coming to you is going to cost you something. Yes, it is. It's going to break your comfort. It, it's going to break your, your normal routine. Yes, yes. If you're going to be successful, I don't care what it is, it's going to require more from you. True. Now, yes. now yes. Here, here's, here's something you have to understand. Without you having a set goal on what you want to obtain, how do you measure your progress in life? Where there is no goal, there is no determination of progress. If you don't have a goal to be debt free, you need to know how much debt you're in and how much debt you're paying. Are you listening? If you got a goal to lose, lose a certain amount of weight, you need to know what you're weighing now. And then you have to, come on now, then you have to see what you weigh next week. If you don't have where you at and where you plan to go, you don't know when you're moving forward. Have you committed yourself to a greater regimen, a stronger regimen, a longer regimen, so that you can be above average? I don't care what job you got. Today, you don't be average on your job no more. Amen. Because you're not average, you don't produce average. I'm telling about it's just a job. You're not average. You will go over and beyond. You don't have to impress your boss. You, you, you working like God watching you. Amen. It ain't your job to pick up that trash, but because I'm here and I'm I'm above average, I'm picking up the trash. See, you don't want promotion because man give it to you. Get a promotion because God give it to you. Jesus, Jesus, yes. You know, I um, I started trucking. Y'all may remember someone used to go here, Keith Bowles. He we we, we went into business together for a short amount of time at for, with Boscovs, and he taught me how to pack a truck. He really did. That boy, can that boy can pack a truck. I'm telling you that he pack a truck. Ain't no air. If it's an ant in there, when that ant come out, he's gonna die of suffocation. Air can't fit in there. So I know how to pack a truck. And every truck is designed to take 12 pallets. Well, because I know how to maneuver the pallets and, and position them, I can get 13 to 14 pallets depending on how they stack, right? And uh and the guy said to me, I went, I went to, to the post office, another guy was there, he, he said, how many you got? I said, I got uh, 13. And you know, the boxes. And, uh, and he said, he said, man, why you, why you got 13? I said, I don't know how to position them to get them on there, because they got a bunch, bunch and bunch of pallets, right? He said, listen, they don't pay us extra, you know. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, they don't pay us extra. He said, no, man, they said, take 12, take 12. He said, you don't take 13. Another guy came to me before. We went, we was going to Lancaster, and he said, he said, come on, let me help you take your stuff off. Right? He had just unloaded his truck, came and helped me. Alone. He said, how many you got on? He asked like 13. He said, what are you doing with 13? He said, don't do that. And what he said to me? He said, you make the rest of us look bad. Don't do that. He said, we in this together. Don't, don't, don't get the see now, this is what you need to understand. I don't take 12 to 13, 14 because it's my job. I pack my truck. Right, right. You pay me the whole, I'm going there anyway. Right. This is who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. right? So you ain't got to pay me to take the extra pallet. I'm taking it because of who I am. Right. Now, this is the benefit of that. If I'm late, they're going to wait for me. Because we can get more on his truck than we can on yours. Come on. You just average. Come on. Right. I can use one of the backup drivers for you. Hey, go get your truck, back up the door 130, take that route, get it going. He's he 10 minutes late. Me? They're going to say, hold up, wait a minute. Right, right, right. See, you need to go to work tomorrow like you really are taking dominion. You're not serving the people. God is going to promote you. Amen. See, when God promotes you, it don't matter whether your boss has ever seen you Jesus. work before. Jesus. For he know you just started yesterday. You've been there 10 years. But God will position you. That when, when promotion time, oh God, promotion don't come from the east nor the west. Yes. God give the promotion. You got to get to the plate. Oh my God. The more you start thanking, if you really thank God for the job, you really thank God is the one that gave you the job, how you treat that job is a, re a reflection of your thanksgiving unto God. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, so you're going you, you to express your thanks 
in how you give it back in that job. Oh, you work in a baby. But now who are you in character? Dad got the breakthrough. You don't pay me for that. God, I'm talking about, listen to me. Bishop David Ehide Pope, he interviewed companies. He's in Nigeria, the largest church in the world. They're currently building a church right now to see over 100,000 people. And um, he's, he interviews, he has a school. Um, and then this is what you don't know. His school is ranked number two. Yet his school is ranked beyond Yale. His school is ranked number two in Nigeria. Yet his school is ranked above Yale. Y'all must not believe in Hollywood what's going on over in Africa. I'm going. God dog it. The girl told me, she said, she said, um, she she I forget what she called me. And uh, she said, we we don't build normal buildings. In, uh, she said Legos. She said that's where the rich people go. She said everything is immaculate. No, she said nothing in the, in America compares to what we build in Legos. <clears throat> but on TV, y'all ain't never seen nothing like that. Y'all ain't never seen something that they build dumb for, supposedly. Right. Bill Gates over there though. Bill Gates got engineers over there from Nigeria. So she said, she said, she said the buildings over here are so immaculate. She said it's like you, you just can't, you can't fathom that she's here in America now. She said you can't, you wouldn't believe it. What they build over there. She said I can't even begin to describe to you. She said I haven't seen nothing like it. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Bishop David Yile Post says that when you get to a place, that you don't know your purpose. You don't have a plan to get there. There's a good chance you're either not going anywhere or you're going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have people teaching you and pouring into you that want to see the best out of you. Amen. Let, me, let me get to this. Let me get to this. Go to Jeremiah 29. So if I got to go to success, I got to start adding more to myself. I can't be average. Bishop David Yedipo interviewed companies to come to his school for them to employ his students. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. I didn't say the school would go begging to the companies, asking, will you hire our students? Company, corporations come to his school to be interviewed to see if they can get on the list for the people that come from his school. Right, right. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you want to see greatness beyond your imagination, you have to go to a country with dark skin people. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Everything else is a carbon copy. Mm -hmm. The original is mind blowing. See, when you're a copy, what I see here, I can see other places. When you are an original, you can come up with something that has never been duplicated. Trump tried. Toll Brothers tried. You know they said Toll Brothers is a luxury home for average folk. Like, you know, people that got like maybe a million, two million dollars. There are other builders. Now, that's what turned my wife and I on to luxury homes. We, we was coming from, I was working in Mount Laurel, and I was coming from Mount Laurel, and we would stop by to do developments that Toll Brothers would build. I never even knew a house like that existed. I walked through the whole house like that. I mean, it was just beautiful. They got some builders that they said if Toll Brothers was on the list on a scale of 1 to 10, Toll Brothers would be 11. Yet Toll Brothers blew my mind. I mean, blew my mind. You, you got to get to the place that, one, if I'm going to see some greatness, if I'm going to see something awesome, I got to see it in me, and I can't keep coming to work just to do average stuff expecting that greatness to flourish. Amen. Gotta do more. Gotta do more. My son, he, uh, he, he's, on, he's on punishment from Alliance because he wouldn't tell me thank you. <coughs> he wouldn't tell me thank you. I would, I would give him an allowance, you know, and, um, you know, 
and, and they always have to say thank you. You know, I put it in his account. Well, he had two weeks straight, he didn't, uh, he didn't say thank you. So he don't get nothing. Because that's, I know that's how God works. Mm -hmm. I know that's how God works. And then I start thinking. I start thinking. And I told my wife, I wonder, do he thank God for his athletic abilities? If he won't thank me for a weekly allowance, does he thank God when he performs above that? Because if you, listen to me, if you jump 12 feet in the air for an interception mm -hmm. and you don't tell God th thank you, yes, you'll never jump 13. Come on now. Did you hear it? Come on. See, right, let me tell you something. Saying thank you is more than just a tradition. Right. Thank you. No, right. you really need to know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have this. Right. 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 Then I start noticing certain things about these athletes that give gestures to let people know it's God. Mm. Right. Watch it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's God. It's God. It's God. When George Foreman, at the age of 45, <coughs> knocked out Michael Moore and uh, became the oldest heavyweight champion of the world, he looked straight up and fell to his knees. Mm -hmm. You see, there's something about saying thank you to God and appreciating what he's already given you. See, thank you make you humble when you walk in what you think before. Yes, Lord. I'm going to say that again. And you're going to say amen or something. I don't yes, when you are thankful from your heart, it makes you humble because you know it ain't me. Amen. Amen. That's true. You sit there, you look, you look at where God brought you from, <coughs> what the devil had intended for you, but where God has brought you, and you can't do nothing but say thank you. Amen. Make you talk a little softer. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Make, make you, it, it, make, it make you start thinking, if it had not been for the Lord, yes, Lord. on my side, Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Did I tell you all that? I just said 20. Jeremiah 29 and 11. I got you on After you give your life to, to the Lord Jesus, and you're born again, and filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? After you, you come born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. There is nothing more important to you than knowing your purpose. Are you in me? Knowing your purpose and then going out to fulfill it. After you are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, there is nothing more important to you as a Christian than knowing why God called me. And then there's nothing more important than you bringing it to pass. I didn't say it coming to pass. You bringing it to pass. <clears throat> there's a, there is something, there's a conditioning of the mind that falls on people that believe God will endorse their laziness, but he won't. He won't. There are millionaire status inside of you, but it ain't going to come to you. You're going to have to go there. You're going to have to leave a place of complacency. Sleeping until the wee hours of the morning because it's your day off. If you can't control yourself when you're tired, you'll never be great. You don't stop because you're tired. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. I stop when I'm finished. I stop when I say this is enough. Yes, Lord. And you get some stuff, you start, you say, hey, I don't care what happens, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. Once I have to, but I'm going to get this finished. And then I'll get some rest. Rest, you'll wait. You sit over there, you ain't going to wait. You can't, you can't, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, my, my, my baby, she's in college, and they got this, this study and stuff late at night, sleeping all day, especially when they got no classes. You know, I, I'm not talking about this, but you know, when you ain't, you ain't did nothing but nothing, and then you're staying in the bed. <laughs> My wife and I was getting ready to leave yesterday. I said, I ain't even nowhere. I ain't even nowhere until I learned something. We were rushing, you know, rushing to get ourselves together to go work on this plumbing and all this stuff. <clears throat> and then it hit me. I saw them books laying there. And uh, I keep $50 bills as bookmarkers in my books because th those books are valuable. It's not the book. Now, you, the bookmark is not what the value is. You, you understand that? Right. The value is in the book. I said I ain't going nowhere until I learn nothing. 
So I sat down, and then that's what hit me, heirs of salvation. I was reading this chapter, and it started talking about being heirs of salvation. So I started looking up the word heir. I said, shut up. <clears throat> then I asked my wife. I said, honey, I know you heard this throughout Christendom, all your church years, uh, heirs of salvation. What does that mean to you? And most people don't take time to study certain things. Right. All the time, y'all heard heirs of salvation. You didn't really know what it meant. You just accepted it. I'm an heir of salvation. Heir of salvation. Purchased by God. You heard the songs. Oh, I don't really know what it means. To be an heir of salvation is to be Jesus in the earth. Right. Plain and simple. Everything he did, you it is now falling on you. That changes my comfortable zone for what I'm willing to accept from me. Because I'm Jesus. I have a legal right to take on his name. I have a legal right to take on his right. I have a legal right. When you get to the place that you're pushing yourself to greatness, you're going to have to give more than what you've been given. Now, let me get to this. Y'all know Jeremiah 29 and 11? God was talking to Jeremiah. He said, for I, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. We're going to read this in the uh, New International Version, too. I want you to hear that. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Right? I don't know if y'all have that. If you can't pull it up, don't worry about it. Um, the, the NIV. And, and because God says, I, I, I have thought, I've already had my mind on you concerning my expectations in your life. Now, now, we'll go back to my son. Now, his punishment isn't that he don't get no allowance. His punishment is his allowance is delayed. See, when you're not thankful unto God, it don't change what God has called for you or what God has for you, but it delays what God has for you. Are you listening? All right? Now, here's, here's the thing. You can miss a lot when you're not in the receiving zone. So now they got these famous sneakers on sale when you're in the zone of not receiving. Come on now. When you start receiving, they may be all sale. Come on now. You still don't get the sneakers, but it's going to cost you more. Right. I'm about to say something. I'm about to say something. I'm about to say something. It was never God's plan for you to have children before you got married. You had the children. Come on now. Now, the children don't mean you don't still get a, you can't get a good man, but it's going to cost you more. Balancing a healthy marriage with your children, trying to merge your family, it ain't going to be all lollipops and cream. I'm telling you that. The younger your child, the more attention your child needs. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then, now listen to me. That's why, that's why when you're single, you ain't got to be working. My, my mama say, you don't not be studying no man. <laughs> you need to be working on you, your family, your responsibility. Come on now. It's not that God don't have a good man for you. You want it when you're not in your receiving zone. Right. Amen. 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 I know you think you can handle it. But I'm telling you something. If you got a child in Pampers, and you talking about something, I just want to get married. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that marriage will be over before it gets started good. <clears throat> There's something that I you know. A man will love your child as his own with time. If you walk through the door talking about something, I love you like your mom, he's lying. Right. right? And you need to expect more lies to come out of your mouth. Okay, and I'm about to tell you something. I'm about to tell you something. There's something in a man that's not comfortable with another man having something from you. Come on now. And he has to succumb to it. It's just a man thing. Now we respect it, we honor it, we deal with it, but, but there's something about it. You know, the older you get, the less you can care. Come on now. They might as well tell the truth. No, no, you know, it ain't like you got a child, you can't get no good man. Yeah, there's a whole lot of women in and had children and got a good man. But at the same time, you understand, some of y'all, you ain't in that season. You just need to let that child get a little bit older. Child in pamphlets, and you talking about somebody wants it. No, I'm trying to tell you now, you may get a good man and mess up this thing. Right. Well, let me get off that. Go on, do what you want to do. Go on, get do what you want to do. Because the moment he want to go somewhere and you say, we don't have a babysitter. He's going to say, where's his dad? 
I thought you was his daddy. I thought you said he had two daddies. <coughs> See, people will say anything to get what they want. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you that now, y'all. I'm just already going to get that long. You ain't going to talk about my man. I'll take my two dollars back and I won't be mad. They'll say anything. Focus on you. You ain't going to worry about no man. You ain't got no word to call. I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to help you now. Amen. Right. If you don't know what God has for you now, you can be focused on the wrong thing. Yes. Yes. And nothing you've done that made God say, you ain't going to get it no more. You're going to get it, but you still got to be faithful unto death. Yes. Right. You don't do something to get something. You do it because God said it, and I'm going to do it until I die. Right. Now, now, God says, and the NIV says, for I know the plans I have for you. I said, he, God said, he got a plan for you. Yes. He said, he got a plan for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Right. Are you listening to me? Is that, did y'all, okay, beautiful. Yes. Plans to give you hope in the future. Hope in the future. If you don't allow God to work on your foundation, there will be much hope in the future for you. Right. Nothing stands without a good foundation. You know, and, and now let me tell you something. And you can you take it any way you want. All right. <coughs> try, try studying the culture of people, and who looks more like God <coughs> than nobody. Try. Take a little time. Google some stuff. The culture of people. Now I'm not saying this is right. I'm just trying to trying to tell you something. There are some countries. You can be a man if you want. Go ahead and kiss another man if you want to. They, they will chop your head off. Now, I'm not saying this is right, but I'm just trying to tell you, some stuff we welcome and we say it's a way of life, there are some cultures that say that is the devil. Right. Oh, yeah. And his head need to come off. Yeah. Right. Right. The young lady was telling me, she was, um, oh, man, I forget part, what part of Africa she was from. Oh, man. I want to say Nigeria, but I, Kenya. But I could be wrong. But uh, her son came here, and he, he came out the closet. So when he came, he came home to visit, he stayed out of the closet. He forgot to get back in there. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm you. No, this is just true. This ain't no joke, joke, joke. Now. He come out there in his country. Talk, hey, hey. He said, what the <coughs> Say one more time. <laughs> hey. Shame. Get the shit. Then she said they had to rush him to the embassy for his protection. They was going to chop him up. In Jamaica, they chop your head off and there won't even be an investigation. Now, now y'all gonna say, that's cool. Now, hey, no, no, I'm trying to show you. We're talking Bible now. I'm trying to show you the difference between a country that will say it's a way of life and a country who culture say it, that ain't God. Amen. 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 Do you know the Indians, they said the Indians sold Manhattan for $24. Do you know they didn't sell Manhattan because they needed $24? They sold Manhattan so that they can help the white man in his trade. Mm -hmm. they, the, the Indians had the whole eastern border. So they gave them Manhattan and said, oh, you guys, come on, you get this. And, and it wasn't like it's for sale. They, it was the kindness of their heart. Read, read, get a hold of Christopher Columbus diary about native people. He said, man, these people are soft, and, and you can surely overtake them. They kind. They generous. They share it. They concerned about others. Oh, we can take this. Try studying different cultures and see how you see the reflection of God in these cultures. Are you listening? God said, before you was conceived in your mother's womb, I had a plan for you. And listen to me. It's something about God having a plan for his people. It don't matter what you go through, you still can't develop hate like somebody else's children because you belong to God. Yeah. If there was ever a people in this country that should have hate groups on every corner, it's black people. Yeah. We ain't got one. war. Oh, they shut it down quick. Even when the Black Panthers wasn't even a hate group, they shut it down because it was just getting too powerful. Nobody in their right mind can sit, clearly stand there and say the United States government had nothing to do with Martin Luther King's death. No, 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 come on. Come on now. 
You, you ain't got to be no, you ain't, you ain't got to be no, 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 no C plus student to know that. Amen. It's impossible for you to sit there and say, I don't think the government had nothing to do with it. I, I don't think so. Do you know that th this country, when it comes to black people, have killed every black leader, not based off how po poetically you sound, but how you can, can mobilize and bring blacks at, with one mind, one heartbeat, you got to go. You got to go. Anything that can become so powerful, so great, so dominant, because of one man, you're going to get rid of it. The culture of this country is not, not you, you won't find God too much. No, you won't. They said, they said something to lose. They said, now, nah, I don't know what you are. I'm not putting, promoting any political party. They said the Republican Party, now this is just truth. This ain't hate, this is truth. Now, you can't, you can't get mad at me, especially I have some Caucasians that view the videos uh, that we post, and then they ask me questions. How can you say this? Because it's true. All you have to do is prove me wrong. Google something and prove me wrong. All right? Then you get some, you get some people that will get to the place where they are ignorant to where they're supposed to be, and at the same time, they're trying to be something that somebody else has called success. If you don't allow God to show you you and what he's seen, the plan God had for you was not a plan to destroy you, it was to build a good foundation so you can be something great for him. Amen. Good foundation. You'd be a good father. Good foundation. You'd be a good wife. I was telling my wife that, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, the people will see what my wife do and how she governs herself. My wife is a different, is a, is a cut from a different cloth. She was raised down in Georgia. Her grandmother was a homemaker. My grandmother's profession was her family. Her family, that was her profession, that was her career, her grandchildren. That's what she did. And, and so my wife was cut a little different than from how my oldest daughter is. My, my oldest daughter tell you up front, I'm not going to school and, and do all this for somebody to take care of me. See, now, now, now this is what you gotta understand. Sometimes you, you want what somebody else wants, but you don't understand the foundation. See, if you don't know nothing about the foundation, you can't start celebrating to get what you see when what you see is not what's keeping that person where they at. It's what you can't see. Amen. Amen. And people, now, now, rule of thumb is most people think I'm a good husband. But they see that. They want that. But it's not what you see that makes the marriage great. It's what you can't see. Mm -hmm. It's the forgiveness that needs to be injected into Come this. On. It's the passion. It's the love. It's the overlooking. Come on. It's, the, it's the closing the door of the devil. Yeah. And when we come out here, we ain't putting on no front. This is real. Come on now. I, I watch myself. I don't need my wife to tell me. Some of y'all get discouraged when your wife don't say you're doing good. I don't need my wife to tell me I'm doing good. Amen. 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 I look, I look at my own life. I know I'm doing good. We were we shuffling some money around. My wife mismanaged some money. Uh, I don't know, about $7,000. But I needed that $7,000 to do something. But, you know, we, we, we wires got misconstrued and all those stuff. It went somewhere it should have never went. <clears throat> I watch myself. I watch, I watch me. I grade me. I don't need no help. I ain't gonna lie to myself. Because <laughs> after I say what I got to say, I need to, I need to, you know, some people don't never like to be corrected. That, that's your problem. But I got to, after I say what I got to say, I got to see. And did I misrepresent God in what I said? Amen. Amen. Step back, look at myself, examine myself. Amen. Come on. Now, why you say well, why I examine myself? Because I'm going to tell myself the truth. <clears throat> if I ask my wife, she said, you shouldn't have said nothing at all. No, no. <laughs> people, people have a way of wanting to tell me their correction. That's true. I'm going to step back and evaluate myself. If I honor God, everybody else needs to be happy. If you ain't happy, too bad. Come on. I think you, what you should have did was left it alone. No, I ain't going to leave it alone. You going to leave it alone? I'm going to talk, but I'm going to know how to talk. Right. Right. I ain't going to disrespect you to make my point. That's right. That's right. Can I tell you something else? And I tell the devil, I was in my closet. 
I said, it's going to take more than $7,000 to run joy out of this. Woo, 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 woo. It'll take more than $7,000. It'll yeah. take more than $7,000. Because listen to me. Now, some of y'all figured y'all, y'all. Now, that was a time all it took was $400. <laughs> $100. I turned that whole darn car over and caught him on the side running. I'm talking about I'm standing on top of it, cussing and swinging. Come on there, tell them this end. You, Pat, get your stuff. Don't need you. $100. $100. $100. That devil come in my house, kick the door, because it ain't locked. I'm going to let him in. He already know. I said, come on here. What you want? Use me. Get it. Come on, devil. Yeah, he, he get in me, and I start, I start cussing and swearing, kicking stuff, slapping stuff around. No, no, you working against me. You ain't trying to help me build. You need to go. I ain't gonna let nobody tell me now. You know, you start talking all stupid. Right, right. Now, now, now I'm up to 7,000. He can't come in. I hope she don't go no higher than that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I hope she don't go no higher than that. Okay, come on now. Enough's enough. You know what I'm saying? It don't make no sense to go up to 10 and 15. Don't make no sense to keep practicing. Come on now. It might be destroyed and break the camera. <laughs> He's talking about something. Oh, you passed the ride with Mother Altars and Papa Altars? He ain't lived there now. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen to me. You need to know your plan. Let me say this and then I'm gone. I got to get out of here. <clears throat> you know, y'all know I ain't finished. I'm finished for the day, but I ain't finished. All right? Let me say this. I got to leave you with this. Once you know your plan, you know what God has for you, it is your job, one, to express hunger to know his plan. Mm -hmm. It's not for you to sit idle until he tells you what have you done to get to know what he wants you to do for him. What does God want from you as a mother? Have you really talked to him about that? The world got us caught up on stuff. We don't need stuff. Stuff will come. Don't you worry about nothing. Absolutely nothing. You ain't going to worry about no houses, cars, clothes, none of that stuff. Some of y'all don't matter how much money you get, until you really get God in your life, you still ain't gonna look good with the clothes on. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm talking about somebody else, they spend all their money in clothing, right. and you wouldn't know right. it. Right. No, I'm saying, when, when you spend all your money in clothes, I'm looking to see something. I'm like, come on now. Right. You come out here looking like a Ronald McDonald. <coughs> Tell me something, how you like it? I, I, I don't. All right, I need, listen to me, I need to know what God wants from me, what he wants me to do, then I got to get hungry for it. I got to pursue that thing. I'm reading books and I'm hearing testimonies about it. God will not endorse my passion. Come on now. My passion has to endorse God's plan. Amen. God will not endorse my passion. My passion needs to endorse God's plan for me. After today, you do nothing else average. Yes. Amen. 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 You, listen to me. If you don't do this, you ain't got to worry about doing nothing else. Right you need to get to the place, you go home, look in your bedroom, and make sure it's not average. Look in your kitchen, make sure it's not average. Because the kitchen don't have to have granite countertops yes. for it to be clean. Come on. No, 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 no. You can take that mail and stack it neatly. Separate the books and the envelopes and it look, I'm telling you, it look just right, just, just nice. Yeah. Instead of just all over them. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep yourself. Keep, you need to come up just a little. If you can't come up in your home, you coming up on your job telling you all you're trying to do is get money. We're not after money, we're trying to please God. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Live a life that people want to be a part of you because of who you are in character. Mm -hmm. People that want to connect me, I told them. It's just the truth. I'm telling somebody today. I've had this lady contact me several times about mentoring her son. I said, nigga, I ain't got no time. I ain't got no time to mentor your son. You don't go to this church. That is just the truth. You don't go to this church. I barely got time with my own family. What? I ain't got no time for you to be with, 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 with your son. No, it's just the truth. Now, we're trying to put some stuff together here at the church where the men pay more attention to the young men here. But I ain't got come on now. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense for nobody to come up and say, Pastor, I need you to just spend some time on something. Who are you? Then do what? Tell them this. People want to be a part of my life because of the character. 
<laughs> and you know, don't get talking about son. You think I'm gonna give your son some money? He can come on. He goes, I'm hungry. I think fed him three. <laughs> what? Yeah, he didn't fit me. Nobody care nothing about Sister Brian. I'm mad. You should have fed DJ for you now <laughs> and packed him a little lunch. <laughs> Everybody tell you no soon I was gonna feed him. <laughs> then she mad, singing all loud and all that. <laughs> Her and Eric just started doing wild guts. She mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> he got a lunchbox. You gave him a little lunchbox with a little Batman on it and stuff. <laughs> Listen, people want to be a part of your life because of your character. That's what you want. You want women who want to be a part of you because of your character. Man. You know, it's ironic. My wife works for Sodexo. She runs three schools dealing with food. But you got to see how, how giving my wife is when it comes. My wife can't keep a secret for a recipe to ask her anything. <coughs> oh, baby, you can sell this. Okay. No, the wife tell you, how you make that? Put in three cups of flour. One cup. <laughs> But then go our investment. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, some people can cook and they ain't gonna tell you nothing. Oh, yes. They keep that a secret like that's that they go. Right. Ain't nobody gonna be buying them nasty cookies you mean. Come on now. Come on. <coughs> I ain't gonna I ain't gonna call no name. We had, we had somebody make some cookies at home and bust the window with them. I ain't like this is the truth. This is the truth. I gave Dodge one of them cookies. And Dodge grabbed the cookie. Dodge just dropped the cookie. He even dodged the cookie. Dodge just picked up the cookie and, and walked away. I got to say, bring this cookie here. This here cookie will chip your tooth. You know when the dog dropped the cookie in the, in the water for a few minutes. You know that's a hard cookie. I told him, I said, Alex, you don't, you don't mix cement with the cookies. You were supposed to mix flour. Listen, that, that, that you start just being a giver. Just I, I don't give up myself. God gonna reward you. Amen. And my wife got this job. <coughs> and I you, nobody got a job like this woman here, God. I ain't gonna lie to you. How many of y'all got a job and walk off when you get good ready? Take days off when you get good ready. Jesus. That's the truth. <laughs> Stay home, go late, come what you want, leave what you want. As long as it ain't the end or the beginning of the month, you do whatever you want. <coughs> Something go wrong with the business, you can get off, all right, I'm on my way, up, leave, do what you want to do. No, this job is up. That's why I tell you, you need to make sure your numbers is right. I talk to my wife like I'm her boss. She told me something happened, her boss came down here, boy, I let her have it. I took, I took that double car, and <coughs> both, both boss went right up behind her. Why is your boss looking at your job? I don't know, you find out what the problem is before he get there. Mess up this good thing? Shoot. <laughs> she'll leave the job of my own. She'll leave the job, give me something to eat, bring it to the house. Yeah, no, I'm serious. This job is like off the hook. <laughs> Come and go and she's going to I ain't lying to you. <coughs> and I mean that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not over there. I'm not talking about once a month, twice a month. <coughs> I'm talking about three, four times a week. She gone. Coming in. She... Ain't nothing for her to come wake up at 8 o'clock, call her. You up? I'm gonna I'm sleep for now. How you get the children when you're gonna get up? You do have a job, don't you? Then they treat her good, too. Put her all kinds of cheap, going to a meeting somewhere in Allentown. They put her up in a hotel, they give her food money, all kinds of stuff. Christmas money, all kinds of money. They do good. But at the same time, you should see her heart when it comes to work for me. No, I mean, I'm serious. Who you are, you want God to elevate you. If God elevates you, no man can bring you down. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your people. They came to this place to get more of you. I pray, God, today they're going to leave here above average. Not one person, not one head of household in this ministry will leave here today with an average mindset. They will grow and triumph to be great in you. We'll give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name.